Aloha everyone and welcome to the second episode of Movie Time. In tonight's episode we're going to actually have two separate movies. Uh, the first one is about the Kilauea eruption of 2018 in Leilani. It is a presentation uh, that the National Park Service, uh, Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park, has put out uh, about that eruption and its timeline. The second video in our lineup this evening is actually a video compilation of lava flows from Puuo'o Crater. So be sure to stick around for that. And finally, Mr. Mongoose will be joining us again this evening for movie time. However, Mr. Mongoose has not got here yet. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We are apparently still waiting on Mr. Mongoose to get here. So in the meantime, for all those that are new to the channel, let me introduce myself. I am Charles, host of Doing Hawaii. So if you'll just be a little patient, I'm sure Mr. Mongoose will be here at any minute now. Mr. Mongoose, I said any minute now, that's your cue. Oh, that must be Mr. Mongoose now. Let me go get the door. Well, it's about time. Come on in, we've already gotten started. I'm so sorry for being late, Charles, but I got a good reason for it. I got something to show you I found while I was coming up through the backyard. Can we show everybody what it is? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Here, let me, let me show you. So, Mr. Mongoose, what exactly are we looking at? If I'm correct, this is a baby cane toad. It was the size of a coquille frog, which is not much bigger than a quarter. Do you see a lot of these out there in the wild? Oh, yes. They're, they're everywhere. Well, mahalo for sharing this, Mr. Mongoose. Well, I'm sure we all do appreciate it. So, are you ready to sit down and uh, get to these movies I want to show you? Yes, I am. I'm actually very excited to see the second one, the compilation of the lava flows from Pu'u'u'u. Actually, I am too. So, let's go take a seat and I'll turn the movie on. Uh, is there something wrong with the audio? No, it's just a very long, silent lead-in. I do apologize. This is taking forever. Yes, it is, Mr. Mongoose. Over the past 10 years, Kilauea Volcano has erupted in two places. The summit and Pu'u'o'o. On April 17, 2018, USGS scientists observed increased pressure of the magma system beneath Pu'u'o'o. This caused the crater floor of Pu'u'o'o to rise. Did you know that was happening? Not at that time. Kilauea's summit also went through a period of increased inflation. On April 26th, the lava lake overflowed onto Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater floor at the summit. On April 30th, the crater floor of Pu'u'o'o collapsed. When this happened, I knew something was up. I just didn't know what. Yeah, I did too, Charles. After the hawk told me what he saw. Two days after the collapse of Pu'u'o'o, the summit lava lake began to drop. When this started happening, the first question I asked myself was, okay, where is it all going? Because it wasn't going to Pu'u'o'o. After the collapse, of Pu'u'o'o, USGS scientists detected a series of earthquakes moving east, signaling an intrusion of magma along the middle and lower east rift zone. This is when I realized where it was going, but I didn't want to believe it. The first fissure opened along the lower east rift zone in a residential subdivision called Leilani Estates. I wasn't too far away when that one opened. Between May 3rd and May 6th, 10 fissures opened in the lower East Rip zone. These next clips of a fissure opening are really cool. It's not what you expect. It's not a big explosive event and lava come bursting out. It's a crack, uh, steam, sulfur, and then lava. And it takes a couple of hours. By May 15th, the number of fissures increased to 20. Oh, 
On May 19th, lava flow fronts formed and moved towards the ocean to the southeast. On May 29th, vigorous lava flows from Fisher 8 began to move northeast towards Kapoho Bay. So Charles, would you say that Fisher 8 is where the majority of all the lava comes from? I think it would probably be perfectly acceptable to say something like that. I am really going to miss Kapoho Bay and Champagne Ponds. It was a beautiful place to, to just go relax for the day. Over the next month, lava from Fissure 8 continued to flow towards the ocean, creating a large lava delta. This delta and other ocean entries created about 875 acres of new land. The hawk told me he was perched on the roof of the building just before this earthquake happened. So it almost scared the feathers right off of them. As the summit subsided and adjusted to withdrawal of magma, powerful earthquakes and ash explosions grew more frequent. The largest earthquake was magnitude 6.9 on May 4th at 12.32 p.m. The largest ash plume rose 30,000 feet above sea level on May 17th at 4.17 a.m. By June, the caldera floor began to rapidly collapse. Dramatically changing the summit landscape throughout June and July. From May through August, more than 80,000 earthquakes rocked the summit with 62 major collapse explosions. As a result, the depth of Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater increased from 280 feet to approximately 1,600 feet, and the diameter more than doubled. Have you been up to the summit since all this happened, Charles? Yes, I have, Mr. Mongoose, and I tell you this, it looks like a whole different place. Well, the, the summit, the crater area, that is. By early August, the volume of lava erupting from Fissure 8 began to decrease, and the earthquakes at the summit grew less frequent. Even though the eruption events shown in this video appear to have slowed, it is difficult to know if they have ended. As of September 2018, lava flows covered 13.7 square miles of land. Over 700 homes have been destroyed, and approximately 2,000 people have been displaced. Many places within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park are transformed by these events. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park thanks all residents and visitors of Hawaii for their continued cooperation and understanding as the park continues to recover. Well, Mr. Mongoose, that does it for our first half of movie time. So we're gonna go ahead and let these credits play because they deserve to be recognized for their hard work and uh, wonderful video achievement. You're absolutely right, Charles. They do deserve recognition. But what I'm really excited for next is the compilation of the Pu'u'u lava flows that were occurring prior to the eruption. Well, then I only have one question. Do you need to use a litter box before we get started? Ha ha ha, Charles. You're not that funny. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Von Goose, it was funny. You're going to like this. That is so cool looking. It almost looks alive, Charles. It is definitely mesmerizing to watch. I mean, just look at it, how it flows. Some of it stops, but then you can see where it stretches. 
I wonder why it always looks so silvery when it's in its molten state. Now this just looks like a conveyor belt of lava. These next two clips uh, always remind me of um, candle wax dripping down the side of a candle or something. I see what you mean, Charles. It does, doesn't it? Oh wow, now that is just spectacular. Yes it is, the individual that filmed this got some amazing shots. If I didn't know this was actually happening here on Earth, I would actually swear these were images from, you know, some alien planet or something. Hey Charles, does that date at the top mean that these images are from before the eruption in Ilani? Uh, yes, Ms. Mongoose, I do believe that means that these are uh, the activity from Puo prior to uh, the May 2018 eruption in Ilani Estates. Hey Charles, look at that there. That's a lot of tree holes being made. Yes, that's exactly what is happening. It could also turn out to be a lava tree itself if the lava drains away. This clip is very interesting. At the top we've got a uh -uh lava flowing and then there at the bottom we've got pahoy hoy lava flowing but it looks like it's carrying a uh -uh with it. Okay, Charles, now this looks like something out of an alien horror movie. <laughs> Actually, it does look like that, Mr. Mongoose. Charles, can you tell me what the difference between ah uh ah -uh and pahoy hoy lava is? Well, if I understand it correctly, it's basically uh, a temperature difference and a viscosity difference. The ah uh, which we're looking at here is always a little cooler, it's got a higher viscosity, and it is much more chunky and rocky. Whereas Pahoy Hoy has a higher temperature, a lower visco viscosity, and um, it, it flows a lot smoother. As you can see here in this clip, this is why the a uh -uh lava acts like the bulldozer on trees, pushing them over uh, versus flowing around them. Is it over already? Yes, Mr. Mongoose, that is it for this one. Oh well, I could sit here and watch this all day anyways, but thank you for sharing this with me, Charles. I really do appreciate it. It was absolutely fascinating to watch.
I'm so glad you enjoyed it, Mr. Mongoose, and I hope everyone else watching did as well. And Mr. Mongoose, you should come over again sometime soon, and we'll, we'll do it again. Oh, that would be great, Charles. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate the offer. Though, I really gotta get going now, Charles, but before I do, do, do you think I could, uh, use that litter box after all? <laughs> of course you can, Mr. Mongoose. And while you do that, I'll say goodbye to everybody else. So everybody say goodbye to Mr. Mongoose. We will be seeing him again here real soon. Bye, everyone. Goodbye, Mr. Mongoose, and mahalo again for joining us for Movie Time. I really did enjoy having you here. And everyone else, I want to say thank you for, as well. Mahalo for watching. I do appreciate it. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell icon also to get notifications when I post new videos and other content. And finally, don't forget to check me out on Twitter. You can follow me there at Doing Hawaii as well, no space. And uh, I post links there sometimes to some content that I don't necessarily make public. Um, also links to other things that I find. I haven't been posting anything lately and I do apologize for that. But we'll be back to that very shortly. Again, thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening.